The effort for a more inclusive and diverse school system in Springfield is now underway. Good evening once again to you. I'm David Oliver. And I'm Jennifer Abreu. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. Tonight, the Springfield Public Schools Equity and Diversity Advisory Council is diving into some of the issues that students face in the district. Our Jesse Inman joins us now to explain how the council is addressing some of these issues. Jesse. Well, guys, the first meeting was actually held a couple of weeks ago, but those on the council say it was really just an introductory meeting to get to know each of its unique members, but tonight they started laying out a plan to improve diversity within the Springfield Public School System. 40 people, all with one goal, making the Springfield Public School System a more inclusive district that can relate to students of all demographics. Those 40 members were carefully selected, and co-chair of the Equity and Diversity Advisory Council, Jill Patterson, says that she felt honored to be involved in that selection process. We do like enough people so that we have a diverse body that comes with different viewpoints and different expertise, and so we just sat down. It's it's my favorite part of it. You just sit down and talk about all the people in the community that um, have a passion for this and an expertise. Co-chair Wes Pratt is a pillar in the African-American community in Springfield. And he's the chief diversity officer at Missouri State. He says the council is using tonight to lay out their principles, but he also talked about what some of their long-term goals are as well. To begin with, there's got to be heightened cultural consciousness of not only the administrators, but everybody throughout the school district. I, I think our students need to be much more aware of the contributions that all have made to the history of America, as well as to the history of Springfield. There needs to be probably an increase in the number of diverse teachers when uh, the school district is rapidly uh, changing demographically. In addition to laying the groundwork for the council's strategy, they also hosted their future chief officer, Ivania Garcia Pusateri. She worked closely with Pratt at Missouri State in the Office of Inclusion and Diversity. Now, she doesn't start in her role until September 9th, and she was only observing this evening, but Pratt thinks that she brings the total package to the council. I think she brings the energy and the expertise and the knowledge and the commitment to ensure that all of our students are successful in the district. Garcia Pusateri was not available for interview quite yet as she has not officially started in her role. But she did tell me that she's looking forward to applying some of the things that she did at Missouri State to the Springfield Public School District. And if you want to dive more into what they discussed at tonight's meeting, you can visit sps.org slash equity. David. Jesse Ingman here at 10 tonight. Thanks. And now to more education coverage this evening. A new partnership means more opportunities for Springfield students. Missouri State is uh, piloting a new program to waive costs for dual credit classes for some SPS students. Students who qualify for free and reduced lunches can now take advantage of scholarships that will waive costs for dual credit classes. The goal is to make college more accessible to students across the community. More than 50% of students in the R12 district qualify for free or reduced lunches and would be eligible for the scholarship program. New at 10 tonight, a federal judge blocked parts of Missouri's eight-week ban on abortion today. The law was supposed to go into effect tomorrow. Our Madison Heaver has been following the story. Madison, how has this changed today? Yeah, Jen, part of the law was stalled earlier this morning by a federal judge, meaning those restrictions will not go into effect until tomorrow or after tomorrow. The new Missouri abortion law that was supposed to go into effect tomorrow will now have to wait until a court case is decided. The law bans abortions at or after eight weeks of pregnancy. It includes exceptions for medical emergencies, but does not include provisions for rape or incest. It's called HB 126 and was passed by the Missouri legislature on the last day of the 2019 regular session. Obviously, we, we thought it was really an important uh, position for us to take. We got, you know, a hundred and some votes in the House. We got to um, pass through the Senate with, without uh, them needing to break a filibuster. Um, the governor signed it. Missouri is a pro-life state and this legislation reflects that we are a pro-life state. Planned Parenthood, the ACLU of Missouri, and a group of lawyers that successfully fought for gay marriage rights all challenged the state last month on whether the law is constitutional. Now, I am also abundantly aware that there are people on the other side of the aisle that, that strongly disagree with this legislation. That is what our legislative process is for. It's try to find that, that, that position that we believe is best for the state and citizens of Missouri. The ruling came down just as the law was supposed to go into effect tomorrow. A lot of times that's what happens is, you know, you kind of go up until to see if there's any other resolution. 
In the judge's ruling, he said Planned Parenthood and the ACLU will likely succeed in the lawsuit. But it's important to note the ruling does not mean the law won't go into effect entirely. It, it has stayed the law, that it cannot go into effect. Um, it didn't get rid of it, it didn't overturn it, it simply stayed the law pending further federal litigation. Parts of the law will go into effect tomorrow. That includes the restriction on seeking an abortion based on race, sex, or the potential for Down syndrome. And the federal judge said the case could take months before it's decided. All right, thanks, Madison. Continuing political coverage tonight as the new school year kicks into full swing, Missouri State Treasurer Scott Fitzpatrick was in Springfield today talking about the MOST 529 program. It allows Missourians to start saving for higher education without having to pay taxes. Families can use their MOST 529 accounts to pay for K-12 through tuition if necessary. Treasurer Fitzpatrick says this program is a valuable tool to help Missourians plan for the future. A lot of people think of 529s as, as a savings account and that's they're very good for that but they're also great they provide great tax benefits uh, when you use them to pay for school so even if you're in a position where your kids uh, older you know and they're in high school maybe getting ready to go to college uh, opening a 529 account can still have benefits to you. And the Treasurer's Office is also sponsoring a sweepstakes that will give out $529 scholarships in the form of most 529 accounts. You can enter at MissouriMost.org through September the 15th. Also in political news here at 10, we often share stories with you from Democrats and Republicans across the Ozarks. But today we met up with members of the Libertarian Party in Greene County during that party's county convention. At the convention, the party announced its candidate for the associate county commissioner spot in District 2. And here's what he had to say. I believe that Greene County uh, could use a libertarian influence on the uh, commission. Um, I believe in organization. I believe in the, uh, the function of government. Um, but I don't believe in government overreach. And I think that we have, have had a lot of that or we've uh, had a speculation of that. The Libertarian Party is largely known for its views on reducing government, having a free market, and criminal justice reform. Governor Mike Parson recently called for a special session next month to address a tax issue for car buyers, but he announced today that he will not call one to address gun violence in St. Louis and Kansas City. St. Louis lawmakers asked Parson to call an emergency session last weekend after three children were killed. Parson released a statement saying the violence needs to be addressed, but he doesn't believe a session is the right avenue. Also making news now tonight, White River Marine Group announced today that it will be donating Nelson Pond back to the Lebanon Parks Department. Earlier this year, Lebanon city leaders made the decision to sell Nelson Park to White River Marine Group, which operates the tracker boat plant there in Lebanon. The group bought the pond because the tracker boat plant wanted some room to expand. Well, since this meant the city would be losing a green space, White River Marine Group agreed to build a replacement. The new park is set to open by the spring of 2020. It'll be located next to Lebanon Middle School and will include four baseball fields, a concession stands, soccer and t-ball fields, a playground and nature trail connecting the Coleman Memorial Conservation Area. A traffic alert to share with you tonight. If you travel down Highway 160 in Howell County, you will want to find a different route to work for the next two days. US 160 will be closed starting tomorrow morning at 8 and will stay closed until Thursday. Crews with BNSF Railroad will be performing maintenance on the tracks at the crossing between Concord Road and Airport Road in West Plains. We are ending the month of August with some pretty nice weather in the Ozarks right now. Uh, when's our next chance for more rain, Jamie? Well, it looks like just before we close out the month of August, we may see some wet weather as we slip into the Labor Day weekend. Right now, it doesn't look like it's going to stick around all weekend long, though. Uh, more on that. Your forecast next.